So definitely one of my favorite off-grid issues to deal with is water systems. Nothing like having a water system that doesn't work. It just makes your life so much more pleasant, doesn't it? Anyways, I've been trying to fix this uh, water system. Actually, I haven't been actively trying to fix the water system. I've just been sort of living with a, a patch uh, measure most of the season. This kind of shows you how lazy and I am and also how much of a priority it is when I have a, a patch that will work at least temporarily. Um, the problem is I don't want to live this way. I want to fix the problem that I have. And so maybe I went a little too far this time in pulling out my, almost my entire water system. I dug up my um, grease trap, which is part of my wastewater system. Uh, because I wanted to get to the pipe, but also I was kind of realizing that there's some problems with the waste uh, with the grease trap that I need to address as well, but probably didn't need to dig the whole thing up in order to address those issues. So this is my grease trap and here is the inflow from my sink inside. So that's my wastewater. Comes in here and over here is uh, the outflow and there's sort of a pipe that's attached to that that goes down below the surface of the grease. There's not a lot of grease because I just cleaned it out but the grease floats on the top, the organic sediment goes to the bottom. And so this sort of, you know, goes about that far down below the surface and collects the water from there where it's not going to have grease or sediment in it. It's a pretty simple setup. It's just a 55 gallon plastic drum, but it does a great job of cleaning out all the crap that would normally, you know, go out through the pipe and get stuck and clog it up. So, and then what I end up doing with the, uh, with the sludge, that I haul out of there is I just take it to my compost pile because I use only organic um, and biodegradable um, soaps and things like that. I don't put anything that's not biodegradable down into the grease trap. Um, it's all compostable. So I just dump it on my compost pile. I put a bunch of straw on top to keep the flies down and the smell down. And within a couple days, you can't really smell it anymore. And it eventually composts. So the problem that I've been having with the system is that um, I hook up the pump to the pipe that goes directly to the cistern and is supposed to be uh, pumping water out of the cistern into my water system. It's, it's only like 10 feet of length or maybe if that. Um, it's not a very long section of pipe, but it hasn't been working um, for a while. And so obviously I hooked it up, tried to pump out of the cistern, nothing comes out. So now I'm testing to see if there's a leak somewhere and so I hook the pump up backwards and I'm pumping water into the system and basically this pump shuts off when it get, reaches a certain pressure and pretty much immediately shut off and it hasn't uh, I haven't been able to get it to kick on again so that means it's holding pressure so if there was like a big crack in the pipe I'd see water going out uh, probably immediately it would be continue to pump water into the system and be just pumping it out through the, the crack. Um, but it's holding pressure. So that means to me, what I think happened is because it hadn't been used for so long over the winter that the foot valve that's at the bottom of the pipe in the cistern just got stuck because I think it's got a rubber seal, might not have been used for such a long time so that when you go to pump water up from the cistern, it's stuck. And so it doesn't, it's not enough pressure pulling on it to free up that seal. If we hadn't had all that cold temperature and I had some fr freezing damage with things like my water filter, um, I wouldn't have thought that there was a crack in it. But this is the thing is you have problems on top of problems and it confuses you when you're trying to do the problem solving because you have two different issues that you're trying to problem solve for and um, you're kind of going based on one, like the freezing factor. 
This is what always happens though. You have to be like a detective. You have to figure out what the problem is. You have to anticipate this thing that has never happened before, like the foot valve sticking. And that's probably what it is. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do probably is go down into my cistern and uh, pull up that little valve and make sure that it's loosened, which really sucks because I shouldn't, I just shouldn't have to do this. <laughs> So this is my dug up system and I dug out my uh, grease trap here. That's where it was. So I have the pipe uh, going out from the house here. This is the wastewater pipe. That goes into the grease trap, it catches it, and then, uh, and then this drains to my wastewater, uh, which is basically it just goes out and percolates into the garden. But you can also see that my pipe, this is the intake pipe, which ideally I would have liked this to go way under and then go up, but um, this was really the only option the way that I had built the house. Um, so, uh, and also it would be ideal if it wasn't PVC, if it was copper instead. Um, so these are some of the things that are issues and also factors in why I thought maybe there was a crack in the pipe because although I do have this heat tape, on it to prevent it from freezing and I put ice insulation around it. Um, and also the idea here is that this is the grease trap and so it's this reservoir of a big thermal mass here. So basically the idea is that this pipe goes right down next to a big thermal mass. So the thermal mass hopefully will not freeze. It also has some exothermic reactions going in there with all the bacteria and everything in the water. Um, so it's probably a little warmer than it would otherwise be. I don't see any damage to this pipe, so I think that probably freezing did not happen. Well, I just got back from going down into my cistern, which is always fun when it's like three quarters full because there's this tiny little space of air at the top of it and I had to kind of reach down underneath the water all the way down to the foot valve and uh, when I uh, loosened it, it definitely felt like there was some resistance and now I just hooked up the pump again, I started pumping and it started pumping water into my system right away. So. Now that I know that, I know that that is a big factor and uh, I'm thinking about maybe just tying some monofilament around it and snaking it up through my uh, downspout, the, the pipe that uh, rainwater comes into the cistern through, and then I can just yank on that monofilament anytime I want to loosen it. The other thing that I can do with that is I can disconnect the pipe here at the pump before I leave for the winter and that will drain all the water out of the system so that I won't have to worry about there being any water in there to freeze. Uh, so all of those things should make this system work better. I'm going to wait until the water level is down a little bit more in my cistern before I install that monofilament uh, string so that I can so that I can loosen it up without having to go all the way down into the cistern at any time and and have to do it by hand. So. We'll see how that works, but that's my solution and finally got my water system fixed. Now I can take this shit out that goes out the window. <laughs> it's definitely some of the best drinking water that I've had in my life that I get here from my cistern. And I also just love the idea that I'm most of the water that I use is coming from the sky. So I'm not dependent on a, a water grid. I'm self-sufficient mostly as far as water. Well, thanks for sticking with me through this uh, troubleshooting and fix for my water system. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share, and give a thumbs up to the video. And I'll see you next time.